In this video, you're going to learn how to use customer journey maps to drive customer centric change using Costalens as your go to tool. Let the show begin. Hi, I'm Mark, and welcome to the Service Design Show. This is the second video in the series of two where I show you how to use Costalens uh, as your customer journey mapping tool. In the first video, we created the basic uh, journey map structure and customers. If you haven't seen that video, check it out over here. In this video, we are going to use some of the more advanced features of customers and look at the pros and cons. Now, I've created a whole course on how to create the perfect journey map together with Daniel, who's one of the uh, people behind Costalens. But this video isn't sponsored in any way. This is just my opinion on how to use uh, Costalens. So let's look at some of the more advanced features of Costalens. And I think these are the features that actually make it into a tool for professionals. There's a lot to go over. So let me share my screen and jump straight in. This is the map that we created in the first video. Nothing really exciting. Now going to the zoo, uh, we've got some lanes, we've got some information cards, we've got some meta metadata. And the first thing that I want to address as a feature, I think it's a killer feature, is the ability to uh, work with dynamic content. So what I, I mean with that. Once you start using maps on a day-to-day -day basis, your maps are going to evolve. You're going to want to add things, change things, remove things, and Costalens make makes that just so uh, easy. For instance, it doesn't make any sense, but let's say uh, at some point we decide that the after phase should be in between. Look at that. I've just moved after, uh, between, before, and during, and during, including all the data that was below, also moved and I can just as easily move it back. Now, uh, this might seem like an insignificant feature, but when you start using a customer journey mapping tool and you have to do a lot of manual dragging, dropping, reorganizing, I can promise you within a week, you will start stop using the tool and your teammates will stop using it within a day. So having the ability to actually uh, move things around and create space like I did here, make things uh, larger and smaller uh, and do it in a like an intuitive way, as we do over here, uh, makes the whole process really, really enjoyable. So now our map is a mess. Let's uh, reorganize things again and uh, we can make, there we go. We can make this smaller. Um, so it's it's super flexible. That's what I wanted to say with Costalens. Another thing that I want to show you are about dy dynamic content is when you're collaborating, um, things go wrong. So imagine uh, that feed the zebra, somebody thinks, well, this is not uh, what should be in there. There should be something in there, else in there. So they decide to delete the card. Well, in Costalens, everything is archived. So uh, the card is gone um, and you might think, well, I, I want that card back. This wasn't a good thing. You can always undo uh, the archive. Uh, the same applies to lanes. So you never have to worry that you actually screw up. You can go back in time and undo changes. Again, something that might see, seem uh, small and in insignificant at first, but this is like, it, it gives you so much confidence to work with the tool, play around, experiment, and actually use it as a tool because you don't have to be afraid that you lose stuff or that somebody will get angry that you deleted something. And just as easy as you can move the cards around, you can also drag uh, complete lanes around. This doesn't make sense, but uh, you can imagine that at some point your map will get pretty big and you'll want to restructure and reorganize things. It's super easy to do in Castellans. And another thing, when your map grows that you probably want at some point, we haven't talked about it yet. Uh, you see here a category, it's called customer and you can change categories over here. Uh, we have three predefined uh, customer on stage, backstage. We can add new categories and this becomes really useful once you start expanding your customer journey map 
into something that looks more like a service blueprint where you actually map touch points, where you map what's happening on the backstage, and then you can identify um, those categories. So everything that's you know, on the backstage will have the category backstage and might have a different color. So it makes it, it becomes visually much more interesting and appealing to actually watch at your map and understand what's in there. Now, the, I've been uh, talking all the time about using customer journey maps as a way to drive customer centric change. I don't believe in maps that are a static image that are just an overview. Usually that's a waste of your time. So how do we create this into a change plan? How do we make this into your customer experience dashboard? Well, for that, we would need to indicate somehow what are the areas of the journey that we're working on? What are the things that we're going to remove? What are the experiences that we want to improve? So there are a few ways you can do that in uh, Customers. One of them is by actually having a status. So let's say we want to remove this activity because it just takes time. I don't know. And in the after phase, we might want to share a, a photo on social media. That's a desired activity. It doesn't happen yet. So uh, let's say we need to create it. By the way, you just saw a tooltip. There are a lot of tooltips in Costalens that explain how you can use different features and guide you through the process. So um, this one, you can see it has a dashed border. This one has a cross line. And I, can, I could, for instance, also choose a color. Let's say uh, red would be, ah, this is something that is in progress. We're working on this. So as you see, your map becomes much more of a, a progress indication. What is happening? What are we working on? Rather than a static image, a one-time overview. Super, super, super important if you are a customer journey mapping or customer experience professional. Now, the other thing that I always talk about with journey mapping tools, and luckily all the tools that we've discussed so far have this, is the ability to collaborate. Also, Costalance has this. Uh, you can share the map. You can share it through a link. You can give people different uh, levels of access. Some people can view, some people can edit. Uh, and this makes it really easy to collaborate with your teammates, but also, for instance, share the map with um, a broader group of people to get feedback. Sharing, uh, again, it's, it's in every tool, but uh, luckily it's also in Costalance and it works really well key feature in any journey mapping tool. Now there is a really interesting feature that again, I haven't seen in a lot of journey mapping tools, maybe Miro has it, but Costalance has it as well. And that is version tracking or being accountable. So what I mean with that is on the right side of a card, you see who has done what. So for instance, if I change the color here, I will see, hey, Mark has changed the color to uh, orange in this case. Now, why would you want that? Well, this could be um, uh, an indication when you're when you're collaborating. You can see, hey, have my teammates actually done something on this map? What have they changed? Because when you log into your map after a week or something like that, you might want to see who has changed what. Version history, being accountable for changes that you make or other people make in a map, key feature really a key key feature now two more things that i want to talk about is one is maps are fractal uh, every journey uh contains smaller journeys in itself you can go you can go down the rabbit hole you can have a uh, hundred different journeys so usually once you start mapping you could say that um, even buying the tickets could be a journey on itself uh, it could have uh, its own journey map well uh, Costalance allows you to create a hierarchy of maps or an ecosystem of maps because every card within Costalance has its own unique uh, identifier. You could just grab this link that you see over here, uh, copy and paste it, and use that. Uh, let me show you. For instance, in this case, the URL doesn't make sense, but um, if this would lead me to a map where I've uh, worked out in detail how the buying tickets journey looks, I just could click here and then take me to a different map. So it will become really easy to create different layers and to structure your map because as you'll see, once you start working with journey maps, you'll, 
you will, you will have more than one. You'll have multiple journeys that you want to link together. And the final thing I want to look at is uh, exporting map. And we have the option over here to export and print your map. We have different options, uh, PNG, PDF, CSV, whole map, current view. Um, when we export the map, let's see what it does. We have going to the zoo as a map. Uh, we can print this, uh, we can share this, um, makes it really easy. And when your map is bigger, it can be really useful. And I'm going to show you another feature where you can zoom in on parts of your map just to export this section and, and print this section. So of course, exporting and printing is embedded within Costlands. Now, we need to talk about pricing, of course. Uh, let's go to the Costlands website. Well, I'm recording this. If we go to pricing, there are uh, four pricing plans. There is a free plan, which you can sign up uh, at no cost. And there is an essential plan. And there is a team plan, which allows you to collaborate on maps. I think that's the most important and interesting part. And there is also an enterprise plan. Um, whenever you're watching this video, check out the pricing uh, on your own because it might have changed. Uh, and I'll link to it down below. Let's zoom out a bit and sort of uh, reflect on what kind of tool is Customers and when uh, would you consider actually using it? Well, what I really like about Customers is you can be up and running within 30 minutes. You can have your first map within 30 minutes and it doesn't force you into a predefined structure. Um, and it also requires you to think a little bit about what kind of information do you need? What kind of map do you need? But you can like the lanes and the cards. It's all up to you. What kind of information do you need in your situation? Do you need customer needs? Do you need uh, the backend? Do you need, I, I don't know, the IT system processes? It's up to you to decide what goes in your map. And it's super flexible. There are, the only structure are like the, the lanes and the cards and the curved lane. And the rest is up to you to decide what you're going to build. And the great thing is you don't have to be afraid of making mistakes. Like I showed you, everything goes into an archive. Nothing is deleted. So you can play around, you can experiment, you can collaborate without um, sort of panicking that you'll mess up the map and never can go back. Now, having said that at the same time, Costalans is really a tool for collaboration. I think any professional customer journey mapping tool is a tool for collaboration. You don't make maps on your own, at least not when you're trying to create change within an organization. So you'll always need to collaborate and that's really well embedded in Costalans. And it's also good to note uh, that Costalans is not a drawing tool. It's not a tool for making the most visually appealing journey map. Although I've had cl had clients who said, wow, it's super easy to actually make something look really good quickly in customers. It all depends on your frame of re reference. If you're a designer who's used to working in InDesign and Illustrator, yeah, you can probably make something that looks visually more appealing. But if you're a manager in an organization uh, who's used to PowerPoint and Excel, stuff that comes out of customers already looks more visually appealing. So it's all about your frame of reference. And I would argue that Costalance isn't built for designers. Maybe it's not even built for service designers. It's built for people within organizations who want to use journey maps to drive change. That might be service designers, but often those are like managers, people from IT, operations, HR. They don't understand Illustrator or InDesign and shouldn't. They should focus on what's in the map. And I think Costalance really gets out of the way and allows you to focus on what's really important. So when would I recommend using Costalance? Well, if you start using Costalance, you can be up and running in 30 minutes. But what you also create in Costalance is uh, something you can build upon in the future. It's future proof because it allows you to update, change, adjust, keep working with the map. So compared to other maps that you create, which are just a static image, journey maps should really be a change brand, should really be a dashboard for creating customer centric change. And if that's what you're interested in, if you're interested in improving customer experience, employee experience, patient experience over time, and you're looking for something uh, which will provide you the structure and like the, the, 
the common common understanding within the organization of what it is that you're doing, then customer lens is really, really something that you should consider. And just to quickly add to that, if your goal is to sort of democratize journey mapping throughout the organizations, if you want to get people involved who aren't uh, service designers in the journey mapping process, democratize the process and the mindset of journey maps, this, this really helps because it's accessible. It's not scary. A lot of people can actually use this. If you want to start using Cost Lens, you can sign up for a free account. Um, or like I said in the beginning of the video, uh, you can use the discount code that is down below in the show notes, which will give you a 10% discount if you sign up for the yearly um, team plan. So if you want to co-create your maps, that's a great option. Have you used Castellans before? Have you tried it? What was your experience? Leave a comment down below. If you're interested to actually learn how to make good journey maps, what type of content should you make? What are the links and information cards that you should have? Check out this video because that's where we talk about how to create great journey maps. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.